Now, the next kind of expressions that I want to talk about are some civil specific expressions to do some particular calculations. There's three that I want to talk about here today. Compute stations and offsets and the ability to get at corridor and surface template properties. So let's start first with stations and offsets and how these work. So the syntax of these expressions is civil expression dot, in this case, start or station start. There's also a station end and an offset start offset end, depending on which value you're trying to get. So you would put this on an element and then you would pass into it as a parameter the name of another piece of geometry that you wanted to compute the station from. So it's going to go perpendicular from the element you're on to that piece of geometry and return the station from that other piece of geometry. Now hard coding a name into here is not going to be very efficient. So what I would recommend you do is put in an item type property into the expression like this.reference alignment, which would be referring to a different property, in this case named reference alignment. And then whatever value you put in here is what's going to be returned in that or used for that start station. Now this does also work with reference files and nested reference files. If you don't specify anything, like before I just had mainline in there, it's going to go look for the first mainline it finds. But if you know exactly where you want it to find mainline, maybe there's a couple out there, but you know which reference you want it to go look for it in, that's your master, you can use the logical names of your reference to specify that. So in this case, geom is the logical name of this reference, and you use a dotted notation here. So geom.mainline is going to go to this reference file that has that geom as a logical name and then find the mainline alignment in it. If your references were nested deeper, you can use that. So you could do something like alg.geom.mainline, which would navigate to the geom logical reference first and then from there to the alg logical reference. But we get a lot of questions about, okay, that's great. It returns this value. I get a number, but it's a number. I want it formatted more like engineering stationing. How do I do that? Remember, expressions are little programming snippets. So you're going to rely on your .NET system functions here. In this case, we're going to do a system.string format, and you're going to pass in the format you want to use. Now, one thing that gets confusing to a lot of people here is what do these numbers mean? What's this zero colon? Well, what this is referencing is the first uh, function or, or expression that you're putting in here that you want format. You could have a more complex string here that you're formatting multiple things. So zero is saying, go get the first thing that I need to format and format it. That's the only one we have in this case, but that's what that means. And then this is the actual format that it's putting together. Notice we used a different format, we get a different result. So the string formatting is very powerful to format your data. And we'll see another example of using that here in a moment. Now, something else that's really important when you're doing this that causes people frustration can be the type of item type property that you have defined here. These can be like text or number, or the, the two most common. If, let me go back up a slide here, if you're trying to do something like this and format it with a plus sign in there, that must be a text element now. It can't be a number. Numbers don't understand plus signs in the middle of them. So if you're trying to do that, it's very important that you have your item type property set to text or that's going to fail. Now, what if you wanted to set it to number? You may have some valid reasons to do that. Maybe what you wanted to do instead is you wanted to do some sort of calculation of calculating the end station minus the start station to compute a length, and you wanted to bring that back as a number. So you could certainly do that. And that number would get formatted in this case using your working units is what I have set up. So it's going to take however you've got your uh, 
labeling so, or your rounding set up within your working units and format the number that way. You could also force this into a different unit if you wanted to convert it, or you could use the same approach we did with the plus sign and you could put a format wrapper around this and format it in some other special way if you needed to. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.